So if there are parents out there who grew up in diet culture and maybe still struggle with like a diet culture mentality, how can they break that cycle with their children and so that they don't, you know, kind of pass that on to their kids, that way of thinking? Yeah, it's such a important topic and good question. I mean, you're looking at me right now. You can probably tell the look in my eyes just grew sad. <laughs> like I just, I find... I find this topic heartbreaking because we did. We grew up with such strong messages that <clears throat> you are good or bad based on the food you choose, based on your body size. And we do still have our parents, our children's grandparents, saying things like, you know, oh, would you like such and such? oh, no, thanks, I'm being good today, or I'm trying to be good, or I need to lose five pounds, so I'll say no thanks, right in front of our children. And so as much as we can start to use some different terminology, we also know our kids are still going to be exposed to it. But the good news is that the things we say resonate stronger, and we know that. And so the best we can do is be the best example, right? So our words have so much power. And sometimes parents may want to say, like their child may ask for something and they want to say no, but then they say something like that has too much sugar or it's bad for you. So a very powerful, there's a couple different things to talk about here, but to give a very practical example first, a very, a very powerful word that we can use is available. That's available. Sure, that's available right now. Or no, I'm sorry, that's not available right now. We actually don't need to say why. We don't need to say, you know, no, the fruit roll-up isn't available because you had a piece of cake at the birthday party and I'm afraid you're going to run around the house 18 times. We don't need to say that. We can just say it's not available right now, right? Or maybe it is. There's no right or wrong to it. And the words that we even use about ourselves, right? We don't need to make comments on anyone else's body or our own. Kids do tend to automatically start to make comments out of their curiosity and we can help them with that. So, you know, if we're at a restaurant and someone has a lot on their plate, sometimes, you know, my kids have said things like, wow, that looks like a lot of food. I'm like, just a reminder, we don't comment on other people's food or bodies. Oh, right. Thanks, mom. Right. And they learn over time. Right. Remember, you know, one of my boys, especially when we were younger, we were at the beach one day and he was like, mommy, I know I shouldn't comment on people's bodies, but I don't understand what's happening there. And I was like, thank you for asking. Thank you for being curious. Everybody comes in different shapes and sizes. Everyone has a personality that's not even connected to their shape or size. That's his body. Thanks for asking, bud. And we move on, right? So we don't need to condemn them for asking because they're curious. It's just part of life. But we also need to consistently give that message of, Bodies come in different shapes and sizes. Food comes with a wide variety of different, you know, nutrition and the way that it affects our body. We don't need to look at food as being in the category of good or bad or our body size being good or bad, more owning who we are and, uh, you know, thinking about what makes us healthy. Moving our body makes us healthy. It's nothing to do with weight right? It's getting our blood pumping to our heart, helping with our mental health. There's lots of different things that we can say that don't actually constitute kind of that good or bad. But we also have to remember that so much was ingrained in us, right? And it is hard. And again, going to that aspect of grace, like sometimes we might think things or say things that we don't even want to. And so just like checking back with ourselves on why that is and coming up with a new perspective and a new way of looking at things. It takes practice. It takes time. And I so, so hope that this next generation feels a freedom from that. And that continues to trickle down with more and more freedom over time. And when we think about loving our body, maybe we have some moms out there listening saying, you know what? I want to love my body, but I actually am, am you know, struggling with it. And I want to make changes. And how do I find that balance. And one analogy that um, sometimes can help is to think about a toddler or a preschooler. We love our toddlers with all of our hearts. We also are continuing to work with them so that as they grow into children and adolescents and adults, we help them in terms of their behavior. Because if we had a 20-year-old acting like a two-year-old, that could be a problem, 
right? And so we can love our body, but also know that if we continue to eat in certain ways, down the road, we are at higher risk for heart disease or diabetes or cancer. So nothing to do with like criticizing size, more to do with are we treating our bodies well? And that's part of learning to love our bodies. So hopefully that analogy is kind of helpful as we as we navigate this um, better, <laughs> better viewpoint on diet culture. 